right. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Stefan, so... Um, it, sounds, it looks like a date, almost. You know, it's like reality TV, but uh, we should probably jump into the content that they paid for, uh, which is all about crypto stuff. So, you know, we've been listening to some of the things earlier in the conference, and obviously you're talking about utility tokens, you're talking about blo uh, blockchain, you're talking about Ethereum, you're talking about uh, Bitcoin and all these different things. This might be one of the only uh, panels where we're actually going to be talking about security tokens. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but before we start, how about, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Stefan de Bates. I'm the president of Elevated Return. And it's super exciting because today we just had a great news. We actually closed our security token offering. So if you Google the name Elevated Return and Aspen Coin, we actually closed today a $18 million capital raising. Very nice. Thank you. Um, and then I'm Slava Rubin. I'm one of the founders of Indiegogo. Uh, we're a crowdfunding site globally for those that don't know. We started out within the perks business, then pushed forward on the Jobs Act to create regulation crowdfunding, and then moved into equity crowdfunding and now blockchain-based crowdfunding with ICOs and STOs, so initial coin offerings and then security token offerings. We actually partnered together on, right. on the uh, Aspen Coin project with the St. Regis. Why don't you actually tell us... So there was this amazing news. You closed $18 million on one of the first, if not, should we say, the first real estate? Well, we don't, I don't know if it's the first or certainly it's one of the first. One of the first real estate projects in the world that was able to do a security token offering. Why don't you tell us more of the background? Yeah, so that's exactly the case. So what happened is we looked at all the people building platform and talking about real estate tokenization. And since we are real estate owners ourselves, we decide why don't we actually do one? So we took one of the assets we own, a trophy asset, the Synergies Aspen in Colorado. So just so people understand with his fancy accent, <laughs> the St. Regis Aspen in Colorado, one of the most famous hotels in America. That's right, thank you for clarifying. And we took 20% of the hotel, we put that into what we call an up-read structure, and we capitalized the read with smart contract on the blockchain, and we went and did a global offering to a private placement of those tokens to global investors. So instead of a couple folks in a garage or whatever metaphor you want to create some software that hopefully will get implemented and one day will get used, you're actually talking about a real asset that people are paying hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars every night to stay in, and this already makes tons of revenue. That's right. So it's real. First of all, you can touch it. You can stay in the hotel. It has an income stream as well. So it's income generating. And like you say, Slava, you have a downside protection because there's always buyer for trophy asset. So... Um, you literally just announced today the closing of the deal. So can, let's just back up. Um, how did you get into real estate investing and what does blockchain and security tokens have to do with the trajectory of your career? Right, okay, so we've been, as a firm, a real estate investor. I'm one of the older guys in the room and I have 20 years of experience of real estate investing. But we kind of figure out and say, this is by far the largest asset class in the world is $240 trillion. It dwarfs everything else. And yet, it's the most illiquid asset class. So we were on a mission for the last two to three years to find ways to take this monstrous asset class and to make it liquid. Because if we succeed and we get 0.01% market share, we're actually doing pretty good. Why is real estate illiquid without blockchain? Because most people today, exposure to real estate means you own a home, you own a condominium, and guess what? If you want to sell it tomorrow, you're going to have to appoint a broker. If the market is good, you may find a buyer, you may not find a buyer, and it's, it's not liquid. And how does the blockchain and security tokens change that? Well, it fragments the asset, right? So if you want to buy the Synergies Aspen, before fragmentation, you're going to have to write a check of about 250 to $300 million. So that limits the number of people that can actually have exposure to the asset. So can people in the audience uh, 
buy a security token from the uh, St. Regis Aspen? I mean, you can't buy anymore because we closed the offering today, but you could, up until last week, buy a little fragmentation for as little as $10,000. So $10,000. So you can own the $10,000 equivalent of the hotel. That's right. And you would have all the same, uh, I would say, benefit as somebody that would own 100% of the hotel. So 100% of the cash flow of the hotel flow through to the token. And so now that people get their security tokens, um, how will they be able to trade them? Well, the tokens will be, first of all, as you know, there are some what we call lockup periods on tokens. So subject to complying with the relevant uh, prevailing securities law, uh, you have to unlock the token and then they will be trading on various what we call ATS, alternative trading system. And then the question will be, where does the liquidity come from? Because I can, we, we, we've heard several topics about security token, but the key question that every one of our investors ask us, where will the liquidity come from? That is the 240 trillion question that we collectively as a community needs to answer. And, so, and, and you know that, Slava, you, you build up Indiegogo, you know that marketplace, it's difficult to build. You need to build a community and you make sure that there is a market. Yeah, I mean, really, all of these protocols are trying to create marketplaces. Uh, everybody is trying to deploy their network and then try to get usage on both sides. So absolutely, creating a marketplace is one of the most important things, even for your security token. Uh, having buyers and sellers is critical and identifying where's the right place to go after that distribution. Security tokens does not feel to me like the hottest topic six months ago. It's starting to get a little bit more traction. Why wasn't this a hot topic when everybody was talking about uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum? Well, I guess because th the reason why a lot of people started paying attention to the blockchain is because you had these monstrous stories of extreme returns. People were talking to me and say, I've made 20x, 50x, 100x. Security token, the beauty is you have downside protection. The, the not so beauty is people have a perception that your value is pretty much fixed. So you can have a stable return, you can have appreciation, but you're not gonna have 20 or 50 times x. So, so, uh, so what's happening right now with the volatility into the utility token, a lot of people are doing what we call crypto migration. So they're going into something which is a little bit more secure for the long term. Right, and you're starting to see the trend in, uh, in the last six months that hundreds of millions of dollars have started to go as investments into the security token infrastructure. Where do you think that's headed? What do you think that means for the next 12 months for the security token market? Well, I think, I hope that the future will be as such. Number one, we need quality product. If we start having bad deals to the market, that's not gonna be good for the industry. Secondly, I think there's gonna be probably within two to three years, 200 platforms out there before we go through a heavy consolidation. And there's probably gonna be about 50 ATS a uh, couple of years from now. But the key point is, how do we bring liquidity into the system? I think that is really where the smart people, the coder, the developer needs to find and say, what is this algorithm of treasury, of market making, and how does it apply in real life situation? So there's some people in the audience, you know, they're attending because they're trying to decide should they buy Bitcoin or not? Should they buy Ethereum or not? Should they buy Stellar or not? Tezos or not? Hashgraph or not? All these different things. And maybe some of them are listening saying, I'm not really interested in security tokens. I want to know about these other protocols. Why should the people in the audience care about what you're talking about related to security tokens? How is it relevant to all of them? I, I think it's relevant because for, you know, typically when I do a keynote, I have two graphs. One graph is like this and it basically show 100 years of monetary value depreciation. So if you had a million dollar 100 years ago, you would have lost 98% of your value today. 
Dio de Graaf. Sorry, I just want to make sure that like hits home. So I want to make sure everybody heard that. So if you had a hundred dollars a hundred years ago, the value of that hundred dollars today would be two dollars. And the other graph we normally show is the opposite. It's a graph that goes from here to here, and that shows real estate appreciation in key cities over a hundred years. And the mathematic is you beat inflation plus about 30%. So why is it relevant? I never understood why is it that people give their kids in their pension fund money. It's like, hey, come and steal it from me. If we can actually figure out how to liquefy the asset, then there's no need for us to have money as a form of wealth storage. And I think this is why it's relevant. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge thought. So just kind of saying it back at you, your hope and prediction is the idea of holding cash is not something that any of these people will do in the near future. Instead, the real estate tokens or the security tokens will be so liquid and they'll be able to appreciate much better than cash that they'll be only holding security tokens and using them for barter or payment. That's right. I think, I think that we should see five or 10 years from now, a society where people can exchange assets for product and services. Money will disappear. So <clears throat> let's just back up. What, give us some of the nitty gritty. You know, you are a pioneer. You did one of the first security tokens ever in the world. What is it that you've learned that nobody here knows or they will go through when they try to actually do a security token offering? Well, okay, so that's actually funny because when I don't come from the crypto industry, I went into the crypto a little bit by mistake, and I really thought that I would find a machine where I can drop my hotel, it would tokenize the real estate, and you would have tiny tokens being spit out of the machine, and I would have a line out the door to buy them. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. When you go to your banker and say, I'm going to create an asset-backed coin, he look at you like you're a drug dealer and says, Stefan, what's happening to you? And the level of education, everybody seems to agree that real estate tokenization is going to take place. It's not an if, it's a when and how. But to be a first is freaking hard. Right, it's daring, it's painful. Talk about some of the challenges you went through. Well, the, the biggest challenge is approval process. So in our case, we have a hotel which is managed by Marriott. Marriott, it's six months to talk to their executive just for them to agree to have the word synergies and blockchains into the same sentence. So it's really educating the market and say there is a difference between a utility to It's the same as the difference between vaporware and Facebook. Totally. And, and you know that, right? So that was one of the biggest hurdles. The second hurdle that we had is to actually find the market players that build the ecosystem. Uh, who's doing the custody for your token? Most traditional investors are gonna say, I don't want, I want to sleep at night. I don't want somebody to hack my wallet and the security token disappears. So you need to truly assemble all those components that makes a successful offering. And uh, without naming specific companies, uh, where do you feel are still the pain points and where do you see the momentum headed uh, in the coming months and years in terms of all that infrastructure, tokenization, custody, wallets, security, uh, all these things that are needed, distribution, compliance? Well, I think that, you know, this three leg in the tripod of a real estate tokenization success. The first one is regulation. So you need to play with someone that plays by the rules and can talk to FINRA with the, uh, the SEC as well. The second one is distribution. You can have the best product on the best platform, but if you have no one on board it on the platform, you're not gonna sell it. So therefore is how do you find existing community and you layer securities offering to an existing community? I think that's super key to success. And third, is what is the pipeline? I can tell you one thing that we are very privileged because we own our real estate, so we can play with our toys to tokenize. But if not, 
how, why would somebody come to you and say, I'm going to tokenize my hotel? The only reason he's going to do this is because he wants a higher price. So it may not be a good deal for the people buying the token. So you just like drop some knowledge there. So basically your uh, wisdom is if somebody's trying to do a deal where they're actually going through a third party and not owning the asset themselves, it should be a watch out for them. Well, it's, you never know. But as an owner, I would wonder and say, why would I do that? The only reason I would do that is because I have a higher price than in the cash market. Um, <clears throat> so, so the uh, real estate industry across the world is enormous. Uh, but we've only had, like we said, one deal so far. What do you think is going to be the speed of growth here? Are we talking like two deals next year? Are we talking five deals five years from now? Give me some predictions from your perspective. When does this actually become mainstream and normal, or will it ever? Well, I think that the beauty is real estate, especially if you go into commercial real estate, these are big ticket items. So once you go into 500 room hotels, you can easily spend two to three billion dollars in one deal. So imagine the number of STOs that could took place. I think that the answer is, how those tokens are going to trade. If it's established like we believe at Elevated Return that there's going to be a token to cash valuation spread, then everyone's going to want to tokenize their assets. So it's a, it's a little bit of self-fulfilling prophecy. If the first buyers of tokens really think that there's going to be a premium to liquidity, then we're going to have a, a massively buoyant industry. Great. So um, we're going to take any questions. If anybody has them, uh, you can just send them to me at GoGoSlava uh, on Twitter. So G-O-G-O-S-L-A-V-A. -O -O uh, and I'll just look on my phone and happy to ask uh, the questions. I have a question for you. Okay. I mean, you, you were one of the pioneers in crowdfunding. You started with Perks, then you did equity crowdfunding. Do you think that that community is looking for crypto exposure now? Um, well, so on Indiegogo, we started back in 2008 with the goal of actually doing financial investments immediately. Because of regulatory challenges, we came up with the Perks model, which then uh, thousands of companies followed with. Uh, we were able to push forward with the JOBS Act in the United States in 2012 and then enter into equity crowdfunding in 2016. We immediately had demand coming in for uh, ICOs and crypto offerings, so we did that in late 2017. And then obviously in Q1 this year, there was a massive freeze uh, from the SEC and FINRA related to these utility tokens, let's call it. Um, we've always been internally very bullish on security tokens, so we just actually did the uh, first security token offering with Stefan here. Um, on Indiegogo, we have over 10 million uh, members, and a lot of them are early adopters. They do lean forward. So there's definitely an audience there that is interested. I would say overall, uh, as the macro, I still think it's early innings of uh, having mass adoption of either utility tokens, cryptocurrencies, or uh, security tokens. I think everybody right now is uh, a pioneer and really a trailblazer taking risk, and it's interesting to see how it starts getting some stability. I do think, though, go ahead. Yeah, I, I would like to, to interrupt, sorry. One thing which is very key is how much money is being deployed uh, what we call backstage. The so infrastructure. The infrastructure. Yeah. It's actually pretty easy to raise money to build an ecosystem. It, it looks like the front end, which is the public perception of those tokens, are still not there. But the money going backstage to actually invest into yeah. the people developing the ecosystem is there. So that should be a sign of what is to come. Yeah, I definitely think that's the leading edge indicator. I mean, there's been hundreds of millions of dollars that have gone into security token infrastructure uh, in the last six months, uh, which is really one of the reasons I feel like security tokens so far, I think, are poorly branded and less interesting. When the cryptocurrencies and the ICOs came about, everybody looked at that a way to get around regulation. So the concept of a security token that complies with regulation just seems silly. Like, if you're able to go around regulation, why stick within regulation? So that all played out its own course in 2017, and then Q1 2018, the SEC and FINRA really put a freeze on that. 
And I think at that time, there was a, a come to Jesus moment for a lot of folks thinking, you know, this is not going to be the Holy Grail. Actually, we need to understand regulatory environments. We need to understand the rules and actually play nice. And that's why you're starting to see massive investments into security token infrastructure. Um, I've been on the media before saying that, to my opinion, 2017 was the year of the ICO and 2018 is the year of the freeze and transition. 2019, in my opinion, uh, a year from now will be the year of security token. Uh, I do expect there to be much more media attention and much more mainstream discussion about security tokens. And you're going to be literally one of the first people that ever did one. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's good to be the first, but it's all about how do you monetize your first mover position. So just another announcement we've, we've made today, we actually buying regulatory environment in Southeast Asia. Thailand is at the forefront of crypto regulation. There's actually set up crypto license for players to take advantage of this new asset class. So we're buying an existing broker dealer network with distribution and we're applying for crypto license in Southeast Asia. So we, we have some questions now that you just went international on us. So uh, is regulation easier in the EU over the US for security tokens in real estate? Well, I mean, we only know, we did our offering as a Reg D 506C under US securities law. We actually at the forefront of regulation in Southeast Asia. I would say Southeast Asia is easier than the United States. Uh, I'm not really well versed into EU, but uh, I, I've read pretty uh, promising stuff about uh, regulation in France, for instance. Interesting. So here's a very tactical question. Um, so if the security token is registered in the jurisdiction, say the United States, um, how do you make the secondary market available in other jurisdictions? Well, in our case, for instance, that's a wonderful question. We had, I would say, about 40 to 50 percent of the demand coming from Asia. And people are asking me and say, why Asian people want to have exposure to a ski resort in Colorado? And then what we found out is actually people are buying those tokens for different reasons in different places in the world. In Asia, people believe their currency is going to depreciate against the US dollar. So for them, it's like having a mini US bank account, having dollar exposure. If you go to US investor, they want to buy it for the yield. So I think that the interesting thing is to have a product that can trade on multiple ATS around the globe 24 seven. And you have different perspective about why you buy it and why you sell it. Got it. So you're really kind of touching on the smart contract and having the knowledge as to what restrictions it has or doesn't. Can you speak a little bit about the smart contract, what protocol, what goes in it? What, uh, what can you tell us about uh, building that? Well, we've used for the Aspen Con, we've used ERC20. Uh, we build uh, the smart contract in Israel. Then we hire Ernst & Young and KPMG. We wanted to have two rubber stamp. And they did uh, what is called functionality and security audit on the tokens. Going forward, as we're buying regulatory uh, environment, I would love to talk to the protocol company and say, convince me that I should build the exchange, the portal, using your protocol. We are not a technology company. We are using technology to, to bring, actually, product to the market. What did you say is the, uh, the lockup period? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, there is the so, so concept of uh, exemption on locker period. The locker period is one year, okay. but there are exemptions to that one year period locker, but we can't general solicit those exemptions. So people will have to talk to you backstage after and ask a question. Gotcha. So you're getting into some subtle stuff about solicitation. So um, when it does trade, do you have a prediction where it'll be trading? Well, w w one thing we would also like to, to throw in the audience here, we want to actually meet people that want to act as market makers for us because we think that the whole security token uh, environment is going to be successful as a community. And I think that there should be people that are now thinking about looking how does a market making function on those ATS going to look like and why. And we have tokens that we can provide to those people. So if any of you are working on liquidity provision and market making, uh, you should definitely contact us. 
So somebody asked about the freeze. Uh, the freeze is basically something that happened in Q1 uh, when the SEC under uh, Chairman Clayton uh, basically just put out a couple messages. I'm not going to get into the specifics, but uh, some memos, some notes, some talks where there was just a lot of concern that was created before that. Uh, the SEC was very hands off and allowing everything to happen. Uh, and then all of a sudden in Q1, they kind of said, whoa, there's some challenging things here we're concerned about. Not all of this is so kosher. I think we're gonna start cracking down soon. So that's kind of what happened in Q1, which really slowed a lot of uh, um, utility token momentum in general, and really then activate a lot of uh, thoughts around security tokens. Um, here's a very interesting question. All right. Um, will security tokens substitute traditional business loans for existing and operating credible small businesses? Um, what do you think about that? I think, I think that like, I believe that blockchain will be to financial instrument the same Eureka moment as what email was to fax and communication. I think that once you have retail adoption, people will start to be extremely creative and use blockchain as a technology to bring product. One thing I'm going to say, the fundamental is the same as an exchange between two people. Regardless you use fax or email, you're only as good as what you communicate. The same thing's going to happen on security token is the quality of the product will dictate the success of the asset class. Gotcha. Uh, so we're just coming to the, uh, the end of our session here. If you could just think about your last thoughts. Well, tell me, tell me, where do you see the industry in, in 10 years, being ten, a visionary? Uh, 10 years is a long time from now, but um, I would say where the puck is going is uh, definitely a movement towards security tokens uh, for all uh, assets, um, real assets. Right now, there's the question as to should I use a tokenized offering security token versus just doing a traditional, just like some people talk about using landlines at home versus having a mobile phone. Um, at some point, you kind of debate it and discuss it, and it slowly transitions. But then 10 years out, you're like, why did I ever have a home landline? And I think similarly, right now, you have the exchanges that already exist that are doing it analog. You have the traditional ways that real estate is being done. I think in the coming years, uh, there's going to be a lot of hurdles and challenges and in infrastructure. People will take their bumps, and some will do well, some will do poorly. Some companies will win out at doing good infrastructure. Some offerings will do well, some will do poorly. And it'll be hard to tell what's going on, but a few years out, all of a sudden, five, ten years out, you'll be like, can you believe we used to do securities without having it tokenized? It's actually paper certificates. Yeah, paper yeah. certificates. I mean, here's a perfect example. I've been at Indiegogo for a long time now, um, and it's uh, been almost 11 years, and we were talking about something I had to sign, and you know, these days, for like the last five years, all things that we did at Indiegogo is digital uh, signatures. So this was something, because I founded the company like 11 years ago, we had to actually find something that was signed physically like it was copied somewhere and found in an email. It was just crazy. I mean, that's just nonsense, but that's the way it was eight years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. And this is exactly where I think it's headed. What, what are your final thoughts? My final thought is I closed the deal, I need a drink, so I'm going to the bar. Congratulations. Thank you.